Welcome everybody to the almost complete guide for Trackmania skinning in Substance Painter. I'm Shadow and this tutorial is meant to be a update on my previous tutorial series. This is a complete video guiding you from the start to the end with the most requested or the most needed parts of skinning you come across while using Substance Painter. All right, so let's look at the interface. This is Substance Painter in its pure form with no project open. To make it easier for you, I'm gonna reset my UI right now and this is how it looks in that way. Each of these windows can be moved around and it this window right here, for example, contains the assets. The asset, is, asset window is basically a collection of all your materials, brushes, alphas, all that stuff. And you're gonna find it always in this window. I, for example, I like to put it on my second screen to have it always in view or to just close it and open it when I need it. For this tutorial, I'm going to open it always when it is needed and sometimes gonna push it on my second screen. All right, let's take a look into the assets themselves. Here you can find a list on the filter. Maybe you have set up a custom shelf like I do and you find a sub list there as well. Alphas, you can find them in here. Color loots, effects, emitters, environments, all that stuff you find here. Presets are the brushes. So this is this is good to know that They are not called brushes anymore, but rather presets All right, my previous Tutorials have been on an older version So this tutorial is also going to show you the new interface and what's new in there and what's different So let's take a look at the, the texture set list. I'm going to open a file for this. So I'm going to open a little skin I've been working on just for the tutorial. And this is how it looks. This is the 3D view. And here in the 3D view, you can see the mesh and all that stuff in it. With Alt and left mouse button drag, you can orbit around it. Orbit around where you clicked. And with Alt and middle mouse button, you can move your view. So if I rotate this, I can then move it like this. Also, with the button F, you can reset your view to a centered view of the whole object. You can change your view angle from perspective to orthographic by either pressing F4, F5 or F6. F6 is all orthogonal view, or you can change this by clicking up here and then going back to the perspective view. All right, how do you zoom? This is basically almost the same. You just hold down Alt and right mouse button to zoom. You could also use your mouse wheel and it's going to zoom at the position of your mouse. All right, so that's the viewport for 3D. There are more viewports for three, uh, besides 3D, and which is 2D. And if you press, for example, F1, you are going to open the split view. Now the split view shows you 3D and 2D. So right here, it shows you the current texture set. And this is where this texture set list comes in. Here you can click on these different texture sets and then you're gonna change through them and you can see the UV change right here and the textures. So I'm going to switch to the skin texture set right now to see what I've painted right here. You can also just maximize the 2D view if you press F3 for example. So now you have the 2D view, which is similar to the usual 2D painting programs. If you press F2, 
you only have the 3D view. So keep this in mind to use both views or just the view which you are prominently working in or working in the most time until you need a different view for specific tasks. All right, so let's continue with the UI view. So besides the texture set list, you have these names right here, the shader names, which are already set up in the current template file, which you can find in the description. So you can also hide these stuff, these individual texture set lists, right, uh, texture sets right here, to then just highlight specific ones if you are, if there are some parts that are behind others, for example. And you can activate a focus mode, which is then only going to show always the one you are currently working on. I tend to have everything activated usually and just deactivate something. If for example, I'm working on this part right here and the turrets are in my way, I'm just going to deactivate the wheels, for example. All right. Right next to the, the texture set list are some buttons on the side. The first one is the display setting. And here you can change some things about the lighting. So if you click here on the environment, you can change to a different environment, which changes the lighting of your scene, as you can see right here. I tend to work in the Studio 2 environment, which in my opinion gives one of the most neutral, but still directional light. You can change the rotation of the environment by holding down shift and right mouse button. So you can see the lighting is then coming from a different direction. Gonna set this back to seal right here. And the other sliders don't really do something while you are in the working mode, unless you change the opacity. So now we can see the environment. So this is how it looks. Gonna put this back to zero. And the rotation to zero as well. The exposure is the exposure. So if you dial this up, you can see it's getting brighter and brighter. So we can already see that there's an effect applied to the scene. I'm gonna put this back to one and we can scroll down right here and I have implemented already in the project some post effects which is basically just some blue. You can leave this on or just deactivate it if you want to. But in my opinion it gives a good result if you are for example then later on working on I'm gonna put the uh, exposure to zero that's my fault <laughs> zero is the base the base volume um, if you're working on some emissive stuff later on, you can see it really glow if you have the bloom activated. All right, you can activate shadows if you want. It's gonna take some performance, um, but it's going to highlight you how the shadows would uh, kind of um, yeah hit on the surface of the the vehicle. I actually don't use the surface while I'm uh, the shadows while I'm skinning. Well, you can, it's up to you to decide that, that. So all these options done here are really, you don't really need to, to tamper with them. You can, if you know what to do. But there's some tone mapping. So we could switch to Asus, for example. I'm gonna stay in linear. You have some, some filtering and a, a nice tropic filtering, which map map bias, all that stuff we can use to change different aspects. Now, below the display settings are shader settings. And here you can select the shader you're working with. So the initial project is in the PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending. And this is the glass shader, for example, right here. The skin itself, 
is on the PBR Metal Rough without Alpha Blending. So I've set up already different shaders in this, depending on where they are needed. So you don't have to 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 care about that, that pretty much. Below the the shader setting, oh, let's stop for a moment. The shader setting also include an emissive intensity, which you can dial up later on. I've set it to 10 to give initially the best result in previewing the skin. And you can leave it like this or change it later to the way you like it for, for your visual uh, representation. It has no effect on the export, by the way. This is just a preview effect. All right, below that then is the button for the assets where you can find all the stuff. We have already covered this, so I'm gonna close this down again. And below that you find your history and the lock. All right, let's see what's below the texture set list. So below the texture set list, there is the layer stack. And in the layer stack, depending on which kind of textures that you're working on, you have multiple options. For example, this button right here. With this, if you click on it, you can select a specific channel of your texture set. So you can just click on base color, metallic, roughness, and all that stuff. And this is especially interesting later on if you want to work with the emissive. Because if I go to emissive, I can then change the opacity just for the emissive. And we get to that later. Next to this drop down menu, you find these buttons for creating effects, masks, layers, and groups. All the stuff you need for the painting. And we're gonna use them when we start painting on our skin. So, Besides the layer stack, there's also texture sets. And in the texture set settings, you see that there is a drop down menu for the size. And this is actually the resolution of your texture set. So you can change this at any time to 2K, for example, and it's gonna reprocess the layer or the texture set you're currently working on. You can also decide on this on the export later on. So you could keep working actually at a resolution of 1024 uh, and then in the export say it should reprocess the layer and export it, it in 4k resolution below that you will find the shader instance you just don't have to worry about this it's already set up if you're using the template and below that are the channels for this texture set you don't have to tamper with them it's already set up as I've told you already. And even lower there, you find the mesh maps. Now the mesh maps are some kind of a pre-baked texture, which Substance Painter is going to use in the terms that you want to, or in the case that you want to use generators or other stuff like filters or procedurals. Sometimes those take these mesh maps into account. And it's usually better to have them generated before you work on it because then you just you just have them you can remove them at any time if you don't want to use them in a, a generator or anything all right now below the layer and the texture set settings you find the properties this is this depends on where you're working at so if I'm going to create a fill layer right now for example this is going to show me this type of properties for that specific layer. And if I'm going to add a empty layer, which I call a paint layer, the settings, uh, the properties are completely different. So this is, the properties are always showing you the properties of the object layer or filter or whatever you currently selected. So I'm going to delete those two layers right here. And let's take another quick look at the viewport. On the upper right side, you find that there are two sliders or two drop down menus. The first one are some cameras I have set up inside of the project 
which you can use to quickly switch through different views of the cameras. This way you can get consistent renders if you want to show, for example, some progress uh, comparisons or just want to make some pictures. And right next to this is the material dropdown and the, the channel dropdown. And here you can specifically select single channels of your texture set or of the project to be displayed on screen. So if I go to base color now, you can see I'm only seeing the color. Here you can see, okay, the back plate is transparent. That's why it's showing this transparent pattern. I can also switch to roughness, for example, and I can see the difference in there. Since the roughness is in grayscale, this is what you see there. You can also just go to material and press the key C to switch through the different channels. If you want to go back to the material view, you just have to press M on your keyboard. All right, so this has been the overview of the UI. Next up, we're going to start working with some actual layers. All right, let's get started with actually painting our skin by using layers. First off, I'm going to show you the fill layer. This type of layer I'm using myself the most because I can change it at any point later on again. So here in the UI, I'm going to click on this button right here, which says add fill layer, and it's going to create a new fill layer. I'm gonna move it to the top. And so this fill layer now has some properties here. Before I change this, I'm gonna make a folder and put this inside of the folder and change some, uh, change the name of that folder. So I'm gonna call it base. So we're going to, going to use this fill layer to create a basic color or a big basic foundation on the skin. So let's look at the properties. I'm gonna scroll up and you can see this is a fill. So it's telling us it's fill. And here you can see the projection, the filtering, and the UV wrap. So th since this is a fill layer, initially it's going to repeat forever. So if I come in here and I'm going to scale this by holding down Control and Shift, you can see, okay, it's just plain color. So nothing to it. On the other hand, you can drop some textures into these channels. Here you can see the UV transformation sliders like the scale, offset and rotation. But what we're gonna focus on right now is to create the foundation itself. So we don't need a lot of channels that are activated right now. So what we're gonna do for the foundation, I'm going to deactivate these channels right here. So I only stay with color, metal, and rough. Those are like the three main components or main channels you are going to use um, during your skidding process. Yes, the other ones are a little bit more specialized. All right. So now that we have deactivated them, we can scroll down, we can see, okay, only those three options are left. So we have the color right here and I can change the color now to whatever I want. I can make it red, I can make it blue, green, yellow, whatever I want to. Alternatively, I can use this color picker. And if I hold it down, I can color pick any color on my screen, even on my second one. So if I go to my second screen right here, I could, for example, pick this color or this. You can't see right now, but you can see which color is displayed on the skin. All right, so let's take this dark color right here from the UI, actually. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. And let's change some of the roughness. So metallic, the name is clear. It says if a material is made out of metal or it isn't. 
And if I put this down to one, it says, okay, this is metal. One is like 100%. And you can see that it's getting darker. That's because metallic materials are darker in real life too. I'm gonna keep this to zero because I don't want a metallic foundation. And I'm gonna play with the roughness. So the roughness essentially says how rough is a surface, you know? Is it either smooth or rough? This is what the slider does. So if I say, okay, it isn't rough at all, it gets glossy because the surface is super smooth. And now you can see it's reflecting the environment as well. So if you rotate it, you can see the light going around that really nice. All right, but I don't want it to be super reflective. So I'm gonna put it up a little bit until I reach a value that I like, which is not too glossy, but still ref is reflecting light. So next up, what would I do now? I could just put on some more layers and paint, for example. And I'm gonna show you what the add layer button does. I call it a paint layer and it is essentially an empty layer. So I'm gonna create one and put it to the top and I'm gonna show you what it does. So this layer right here, you see, oh, it's pop, uh, it just opened a brush. So with this brush, you could now basically directly paint on this. But the catch here is that a paint layer is a destructive layer. So you could paint over and over and over again onto the same layer, this one, just like in any other 2D application, if you don't create a new layer. What's special about this uh, setting right now is I have the mirror the symmetry activated. So this creates this red line right here. And you can just deactivate it if you don't want it to be symmetrical. If you activate it after that, it's gonna create a symmetric mirror. Then again, I'm gonna undo this. And yeah, if we scroll down here on the paint layer, you can see we have the brush settings. So here you can change the size of the brush. You can also do this with hotkeys. So if I hold down control, for example, and then go left and right, I can increase or decrease the size. I can also change the hardness of it, which is this value by going up and down with control. And I can rotate it, which you're not gonna see on a square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this brush right here, just so you can see it. If I hold down sh uh, control and then use my right mouse but uh, left mouse button going up and down, I can rotate this brush in my view. I can also change the flow, which is basically your opacity by holding down control and left mouse button and sliding it left or right. All right, let me reset my brush here in the presets. I'm gonna select the basic soft. And if we scroll down or up, you can see all these options right here. You can see the spacing and the size jitter. So we could add some jitter, for example. We could add some flow jitter angle on a circle, this doesn't make sense. You can change the position as well. So this is gonna be the result then. Can I have some some brush paint now, some brush, uh, airbrush brush, <laughs> airbrush pattern, there we go. Something like this, but if we make this even smaller then it's more of an airbrush pattern. All right, I'm gonna undo this and I'm gonna reset this right here. And uh, let's zoom, let's go down even further in the properties. And here you can see all these channels. 
and the channels that are activated are the ones you are going to use with the next stroke so to highlight this I am going to deactivate um, these channels right here I'm gonna set my color to red make it super glossy and I'm gonna paint a stroke now let me paint this right here there we go so now you have this really glossy part and let's say I'm gonna change this now make it uh, rough completely rough and let's make it blue and I'm gonna paint over this you can see it's destroying my previous stroke since this isn't a non-destructive layer so but it is a absolute layer all right so the next thing we're going to take a look at is the paint the fill layer again but this time we are going to add a pattern to it so i'm going to make a new folder because we have the base already i'm going to put this it's already in the folder i'm going to call this main i'm going to make i'm making a lot of folders because it helps you with organizing your skin you can also the name your sub layers and all of this um, but at least create layers inside your folders so that you can group them together and then find specific parts later on again if you see some problem you maybe missed before all right so this fill layer right here i'm gonna have to deactivate all the channels here i'm gonna deactivate the metal as well i'm just gonna keep the roughness and the color so now i can you know overwrite the base layer but what's interesting is i could instead of just doing a complete fill i could import a texture and so i'm going gonna go into the asset uh, window right here into my shelf basically and then I'm going to project because I've imported something already and I have this texture right here and I'm gonna drop this inside of the base color and this gonna apply it is going to apply it on the whole skin now you may ask hmm, how do I import a custom custom content like a texture well it's pretty easy you just open your asset window and then go to the place where you have the, the file and you just drag and drop it in there give it a tag say what kind of uh, asset it is so is it a texture an alpha or the all kind of stuff and then you have three options for importing so first one would be current session so if you close substance it's it's not gonna be in your shelf anymore but if you have applied it to a skin it's gonna stay but i want to put this into the project because it is a project related asset i'm just going to use for this project so it's gonna be saved in the file and the third option would be uh, the library which then this asset is going to stay there forever until you remove it from the folder I'm gonna put it in the project and say import and there it is and now I can just drag and drop it in here just like I did in the beginning all right so let's take a look at the projection modes so right now we are on UV projection what is UV projection basically if we go to the side-by-side -side view it's just putting this texture this image on the whole uv on the 2d space so it's just like right here you can also see it's repeating and to remove that repeating you go to uv wrap and you click on none so initially most of the stuff in substance is actually like seamless and repetitive so most of it repeats by itself over and over and you can change this either by saying it should only repeat horizontal or vertical and 
I'm just gonna go with none right here. Something else. You can see that this image right here is wider than, than it is uh, in his height. So this is kind of pushed together. So I'm gonna fix this by holding down control and then scaling this on this axis. I'm gonna hold down control shift to generally scale this. And then I can start to lay this in the 2D view basically. Just like this. In the 3D view you can see how it turns out in the end. And if I move this over here I would have applied this to the whole skin. And so now you probably recognize already the first problem we have with this type of projection. Where you get seams. Simple as that. You see, since this is laid over the 2D view, it doesn't take those gaps into account. You have to manage this yourself. But there are other options as well. I'm going to reset the scale and the offset and rotation for this layer, just like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the projection now to triplanar. So what is triplanar doing? Basically it is projecting the texture from three sides to kind of blend into each other. This doesn't work on this one right here. It works great if you have a seamless pattern, for example, and you want it to go smooth around edges and all that stuff, um, then it is great to use. But in this example, it, it doesn't really work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use planar projection. And now this is super stretched. We don't want this, of course, but don't worry for now. There's this mode called surface tool in the planar projection. And it pops up this little, uh, this little gizmo right here, and you can just drag it onto the object, and it's gonna deform along with the three D with the surface of the car right here. And so this projection is actually doing this in the three D space. So there is no seam as you can see right here. And it, this is way more useful than the other way around. So I'm going to scale this to fix the, uh, the aspect ratio. And now I'm going to place this on this side right here. Now you might say, okay, I place it on this side. Um, I'm just gonna duplicate it and then I don't know, place it on the other side. Let's see, we have some other options right here, which are 3D projection settings. You have the offset, rotation, scale. You could just use these sliders to, to change it. But there's a way easier way to do this by using filters. And we're gonna do this later on. So stay tuned if you want to know how to get this on the other side as well. All right, so I'm gonna move this just by a little bit down here. Wait, this is a copy. <laughs> my, my mistake, there we go. I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit and I actually want to let it repeat itself now, but just horizontally. So there we go. I'm gonna rotate this. All right, this is looking good. So I could keep, uh, let it be like this, for example, right now, and then continue my work with other shapes. There's still some alternatives. So this is the, the most easiest way of getting some kind of a pattern on your skin you're working on. Um, but you could also do it by hand. And this texture here, right here, for example, is not in the best resolution. So technically you could also use this just as a 
template and then trace it with some layers. So I could just come in here now, I'm gonna make a black mask on this one right now. So I want to work on a mask, uh, hide the content for now. I'm gonna select uh, the color of this layer, of this part right here, and then I'm gonna deactivate all the layers besides the roughness, or I'm just gonna keep the color. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to trace this by changing the color on this layer. So now we get into the filters and I'm gonna show you also the filter for uh, mirroring this. It is actually just called the mirror filter. Yeah, I'm sorry, I should, I should have shown this right away. So like just like this, you click on the layer, click on the magic wand up here, then you go to filter and it asks you to select the filter and if you scroll down you find the mirror filter so now probably it's gone if you haven't been on this side and uh, you get it back by just inverting the x axis and there you go now you have your pattern on both sides just like that and it's going to be mirroring forever so you could move this uh, and you see that it's going to mirror it on the other side as well if you're moving this that's it's really handy overall especially for making patterns and getting panels of your skin on the other side of the skin as well. But the thing is, with the mirror filter, you kind of have to clean something up. So I'm going to show you this later on again. And uh, as I said, let's um, get something here. I'm just gonna reduce the opacity. And then I could Technically, I'm gonna switch to the orthogonal view. And now I can just click here and then trace this. This shape. By painting out the mask along its path. So how am I doing steady strokes? And you can see it's clipping here at the little edges. You just have to go over it a couple of times sometimes. There we go. So basically I'm clicking at a position then I hold down shift and then click again. You can also do a click Hold down shift and control and then you have 45 um, degree steps before you click again and then like this it's not going to take the position on the skin on the on the model the account it's taking your screen position account so you can't do this the way you click and then hold shift and click again and then like move because it's then drawing a line from where your previous position on the screen was not on the mesh all right so i could now just you know keep going with this and paint out the whole pattern to to kind of trace it get it into a better resolution for my own needs
All right, so after filling out this shape right here, you probably see that you have some, probably gonna have some mis mistakes. So if you press X on your keyboard, you can invert this brush and then go into black and black is basically zero. And now you can kind of correct some of the stuff where you've made mistakes. Just do it gently wherever you feel like, okay, I need to fix this to improve your result. You can see I'm already painting on the other side as well because I have symmetry on. And so now I can do the same for the next layer. I'm just gonna duplicate this layer by doing a right click on it and then hit duplicate layer. You can also uh, hit control D on your keyboard. It's also gonna duplicate it. And next up I'm just gonna change the color and then for that, I'm gonna redo. Yeah, there we go. I just need to wait. What gonna change? Dude, there we go. There we go. All right, all right, all right. And I'm gonna do a right click on the mask, and I'm gonna clear the mask. So now I'm going to move this below the previous layer, and I'm just and I can just. Um, do the same thing but I don't don't overwrite this lighter shade of blue if I'm painting over all right so this is how it works working with fill layers you essentially put on a mask and then work on that mask because you can at any time you can later move that mask and then uh, we'll clear it and then rework it if you want to hey shadow i don't want to just do straight lines is there a thing i can do to kind of fix that or work Free-handedly with a, a brush, yes it is, and this is genius, a genius tool. I'm just gonna duplicate the layer right here, so we get another color. I'm gonna take the the yellow one this time. So, uh, bro, let me increase this. There we go. Okay, uh, clear the mask. All right, so. Hey, uh, you want to do smooth lines, curved lines by hand, totally fine. You can do this. And it's, it is actually super simple. Up here, besides the symmetry to the left side, you find lazy mouse. And lazy mouse enables this kind of opacity circle around your brush. So if I'm clicking now, you can see, okay, I click. Oh, the brush isn't moving. Uh, the, the, the stroke isn't moving with my brush. It is actually moving now with the outer edge of that circle. So now I could do really smooth lines, just like this. Lol. <laughs> and this way you can do a lot of things. You can, you know, do some cool curves. <laughs> in the middle it isn't too perfect you just have to to play with distance in that case and you can also do with the linear ease ease in ease out i'm just gonna do the ease in you can see if you you can move back you can put punch it to one side as well so that works but if you hold a steady stroke you should be fine with the uh smooth uh the lazy mouse giving you a smooth curve like this obviously you have seen that there are sometimes a problem and totally true the way we're gonna get around this is by changing the alignment and the size space so i'm going to change my alignment to camera and then it's going to be dependent on the camera 
and it doesn't kind of try to wrap around the UV space anymore. It just goes where the camera is and it connects that. All right. So this is how you fix this problem. What about any other shapes? Can I paint with some shapes? Yes, you can as well. All you have to do is just go into your asset folder, go to alphas, I'm gonna remove the texture search right here, and then you can paint with alphas, for example. So alphas are basically black and white images. They are not transparent. You can make your own, uh, your, your own ones, but as I said, they, sh they are not supposed to be transparent. You can just use black and white PNG, for example, or TIFF, that works as well, or TGA files. So let's say I'm going to, how about I'm gonna use this one, for example. So I can, I'm gonna deactivate the lazy mouse. I can just, okay, I want to, to paint on the, uh, the, fuel, the fuel cap, but I want to do it in 2D. So I'm gonna switch to the 2D view. And then I'm just going in here and click on it like this. But this just worked. Okay, so this this is fine. But there's a problem. If you just want to like paint out the edge right here, you can see oh it's connecting to the other side. So how do you fix that? Well, it's also about the alignment and the size space. So the alignment in this case, if you want to paint in 2D, is actually UV, and you should change your size space to texture. Because if it is in object, it's going to change its size. Okay, not if you have it in camera mode <laughs> before, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it sometimes does, it's just not that rapidly. Ah, there we go. So you can see it's changing its size depending on the, yeah, on on the on the on the mesh. But if you change it to texture, it will always stay the same. If you are in the 2D view, paint, uh, painting on the 2D view. So I'm just gonna click here in the middle, and now I've just painted on the fuel cup, and I painted on the other side too. <laughs> so I'm just gonna deactivate the symmetry and paint on the fuel cap. There we go. Just like that. And a good thing, as I mentioned in the beginning about fill layers is, I can come in here at any time, activate some more channels. How about, I'm gonna make it gray. Let's make it metal. Uh, okay, let's make it darker. <laughs> and then make it glossy. So now it should ref should be reflecting. There we go. Now it's reflecting a lot. And this is what you can do about it uh, with it. Here's a little special. If I use the height channel, I can make this. I can give it some height depth, but this is a little bit complicated to get into your texture later on when we see about this further into the tutorial. All right. So, you already probably see the problem right now is we have the color on the wheels. So the, uh, the mask, mask workflow is also yours your savior in that situation because you could actually you can also just add a mask to a complete folder that also works and if you go then to the poly polygon fill mode and then let's just say okay this part right here you can there's color I want color in here that's fine that's nice, yeah. I want it on here. All right, on here as well. Okay, then you have to click a lot. What's easier is, 
instead of adding a black mask, you can add a white mask. White mask actually defines that everything is already visible. And then you can just, for example, in 2D view, you can just come in here and then remove those parts in the 2D view, which is way easier. So I'm going to remove all the parts where it isn't needed or wanted to have these kind of pattern on there. And then it is all cleaned. All right. And so this is how you can make your, your skin for the initial shapes, colors and textures. You can layer them all above either, each other, mask them out. You can use complete materials as well. So since substance is about materials, you can also use these, for example, if you find a good use for them. Just however you like it. All right, and next we're gonna take a look at how to use um, the generators, filters, and sub layers on mask, masks specifically. So let's make a general a new folder and we're gonna call it the sub layers folder just for the tutorial and i'm gonna make a yeah fill layer in there now this fill layer is already over the old skin so i'm gonna add a black mask like usual but i'm gonna make this one red because that's a really really bright color i'm gonna deactivate all that stuff so Let's say, okay, I want to add some procedural dirt onto the car, you know, some general dirt or that kind of stuff. What I'm gonna do, very simple. I'm gonna add an effect, and this time we're gonna add a generator. So I'm gonna select generator. And now I'm going to select dirt, for example. And you can see, oh, I'm gonna switch to the perspective view right now. Uh, okay, this is applying a global uh, generator onto my skin. You can see right here, it is way more intense. And that's because of what I mentioned in the beginning about the mesh maps. Those mesh maps have an input right here. And you can do some edge masking as well with this. Um, Try planar blending, uh, then the contrast, let's reduce it. There we go. So you can see it, it's only right here. And I technically you could leave this because this area right here is really close to the uh, the tires. So that makes sense that those are like the dirtiest parts of the whole skin, as well as the, the air induct in the air inflow right here. Or these parts so that that makes sense somewhat that's how the, the ambient occlusion was baked for this purpose I could also just remove this and have a general value overall so I'm just gonna remove this and then, and then put the ambient occlusion to one And then, let me, wait, let me activate the other ones again. So I'm gonna deactivate this. Wait, no, <laughs> curvature as well. There you go. So now I can just have it as a general global dirt layer. I can change the uh, contrast, the scaling. So I'm gonna change the scaling right here. Uh, I'm gonna use trap planar. Here we go, so now you don't have these seams anymore. That's what I said before about the projection. And now I can just, yeah, let's make it, I don't know, we could also just make it white or, oh well, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's a little bit dirty. Let's make it brown, then it actually fits with the idea. 
so we go. So we get some dirt on this. And I want to make dirt, of course, completely not reflective. It's just dirt. There are more generators overall. I'm gonna delete this one right here. I'm gonna make it big red again. And so if we click on the dirt generator right here, we can change it at any time. We can, for example, change it to, yeah, mask the, the curvature. And then have it global blur and all that stuff. So this, those you can at any time rebake the texture set, uh, the, the the mesh maps, so that it fits again. For example, um, what I would change in this is uh, let's make it a mesh ID polygroup, and let's change it to random color ambient occlusion. I just want this to. Uniform number up by mesh name, self occlusion only same mesh name. Attenuation linear, yeah. And we're gonna go curvature, gonna generate from mesh. Self intersection only the same mesh name, position. Yep, and then I can just bake it again for all the different mesh maps. This is how it looks. There we go. So now the result is way better. So if I reduce the global blur and the balance, okay, you see it's really on these edges right in there. So it needs a higher resolution for the curvature to actually get in there. So. Cavities. You can change a lot of things. All right. Let's undo a lot of stuff. There we go. So back to the original mesh maps. And I'm going to change this generator to UV checker. <laughs> so now you can see the UV checker boards right here. But I'm gonna I'm just gonna remove it because I want to show you something else. How about the fill sublayer? So the fill sublayer is essentially a another fill layer but on a mask so what I can do now is insert a grayscale in here and then I can move this grayscale in the 2D view as a mask. This is more convenient if you have you know a pattern on the base color in the main layer but then just want it to be visible in certain strokes in certain ways so you can now use this this type of um, texture then or fill on the mask to do exactly that. So this is what you get then. I'm gonna dum -dum -dum. move to the front end so you can see the effect here now. I'm gonna change the balance a little bit, contrast as well. Let's go expansion. Yep. Noise parameter, the disorder. Order. <laughs> and because we are hitting some of the other ones right here and not using the planar projection, I'm just gonna add a paint. And then paint out the parts where I don't want this to be. Just like that. Just like that, I made this nose right here. Obviously, you can see the lower side is not affected. If you want to get this affected, then you have to use the planar projection. So reset. If you switch the projection mode, always reset the transformation. 
That's very important. And then go to planar. And we're going to use the surface two for now. And I'm going to check on the 3D projection settings by setting this to zero. This can stay, this as well. The rotation is going to be 100, that's fine. 180 and 180 as well and I'm gonna gonna zoom it a little bit So there you go. This is how you apply this in the planar projection. And let's take a quick look at the other projections because we haven't covered them yet. So we have the spherical projection, which is yeah, projecting it in a sphere. You also have the cylindrical, which is doing a cylinder and then projects it that way and last but not least we have the warp projection the warp projection is a little bit special so I'm going to show you this in on a different layer all right so let's create a new layer and this time I want to have a texture on this so let's check out my textures I have right here so I'm going to use some some typhoon camo and I'm gonna put this into the base color. So now it is in the UV fill mode. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this to VARP projection now. And this is gonna open up this um, rasterization right here, where you have these um, arrows in the 3D space. And first you have to, to set something up before you can use it. So you kind of have to, you have to rotate it obviously because this is going to define a grid way which you can deform to um, place the texture around your car by defining the direction of projection for each individual of these um, grid squares but this is a little bit more complicated here above here you can change the rows so I'm going to make five rows right now and then I'm going to transform the whole warp I put it up here you can see okay it's uh, it is projecting it as far as the arrows go so let's see the uh, projection depth I can increase this I put this to 0 0.2 and now I'm gonna move this up a little bit more just to kind of have to be in the orthogonal view to kinda get there. I'm gonna move it right to this height. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, get back to the perspective view and I'm gonna change the mode which is going to be added vertices and now you can see we have these little balls right here and I can select them I'm gonna switch back to uh, orthogonal I want to select these right here and now I'm going to move them wait there's one thing missing before we start. I need to add a row in between. There's two. Split warp horizontal. Uh, oh, no, that's not horizontal. We want it vertical. So I'm going to split it in the middle. Somewhere in the middle is the fiddle. like this 
It doesn't have it doesn't have to be too perfect. So I'm going to select this row. I'm going to move it upwards, and you can already see the texture is already starting to bend along this path. I'm going to select this and that. I'm going to move them up as well. And now, what we're going to do now is automatically adapts the tangent. I'm going to move this over here. So it's basically you kind of defining a path for your texture to then project along this path. You can see here is the the line which you want to follow in general and then texture is going to deform on this line. So let me move this up close. And let's move it from above. You can see that this is now following the uh, the curvature pretty good but we have to do a lot more work but you can, you get the general idea so I'm gonna move this down at this I'm gonna move down at this right here as well and for the back side too gonna move them down and down. I'm gonna move them a little bit more to the back. So you can see this is how you then project your textures onto it. And you can still scale it um, so that it fits in the end. So just like this. So that there's no deformation. And you just have to add and add on of these rows basically to get the perfect um, shape done onto it. Let's switch back to perspective so you can see it better. So this is how this works. All right. So now that you have seen this, uh, maybe you're gonna use this in the future to um, get whole pictures onto your skin without having any blending or something, but just a complete projection. I'm gonna see if I can find, uh, if I can pre-make some kind of a completely covering projection so that you can just drop this into your sh into your layer stack and then put your texture in there and it's gonna wrap completely around the car perfectly but not for now all right so the sub layers and the, the filters and the procedural so we're going gonna go here we get paint you can stack those stuff as well Got some filters. Um, how about the filters? You can change a lot of different things I showed you before already. Uh, you can even transform your layers with filters again. So if I come in here, I can actually just transform this <laughs> just like that. It's pretty funny. And you can stack them on top of each other and you can at any time remove them. All right, so this is basically all you need to know for now in terms of the basic skinning and layers and filters and generators. So let's get to, to something sp a little bit more special. How about creating some lights? How about creating emissive materials? And this is what we're gonna cover now. All right, so let's take a look at some of the pre-made examples. So in the layer stack, I've already given you this folder right here. 
And this photo right here has already a lot of layers in there. And those are paint layers. So they are constructive, but you can use them as a template for all the different illum or emissive channels or types of emissives you can create for Trackmania. So night on, you can see we have this drop shadow right here and the paint. And the paint is what you're gonna use for painting and the drop shadow is there to prevent any spilling of you know artifacts later on in the game. So the paint is just really a brush. You select on the paint on the layer where you want it and then you scroll down what you have to do is activate the emissive. So I want this to be red, red emissive, okay. And this is only going to be on by night. You can't cross two of these layers because they're gonna be um, killing each other. And it actually then can create artifacts or unwanted results basically. So just stay on one and then paint around uh, it with another one. There we go, so let's um, paint something in here. I'm gonna activate the symmetry. And so now you can see, oh, we get this glow, we get the uh, emissive effect, the, the bloom, uh, which is in the display setting. And this is basically it. There's nothing much to it. You just have to paint at the position where you want it, like this. It is easier to paint on 2d if you want to go into details so this the details texture set list uh, has a lot of these small parts and the way you find them is actually just by you know just go there i don't know paint on here for example then oh okay this is lighting up so i have to paint on here for example you know so you just go in there you just paint in 3d and then look in 2D, where, where did something happen? This, then, this is how it works. Right? So, the way the emissive works is, is that it has different emissive uh, opacity. And if we use this drop down menu right here, you can switch to the emissive. And so now you can see the opacity values of the emissive. It is not this one. If you change this one right here, it's only the opacity for the base color. And many people have already kind of confused this with each other, which I found pretty funny, but hey, it can happen. And so let's look to the front. You can see that we have this glass right here. And behind this glass is actually a part where you kind of are supposed to, to paint on. So let's see, I'm gonna paint on this. Let's see, where is it painting? This is not the one, it's just spilling there. This is the one. So I can come in here then and then just click on here and paint a complete line on into this. And so now I've completely painted this emissive stripe there. And let's check the view in the emissive dropdown. This is how it looks. And what is interesting for you to see is actually the drop shadow. So if I deactivate this, you can see, okay, there's no black outline anymore. Why do you need this drop shadow? It's very simple. If you look right here, either in the 2D or the 3D view, you can see that the opacity isn't absolute. You have some kind of aliasing, there are some, some smoothing in it and this is actually not good because this creates different values in transparency and you don't want this. The easiest way to fix this is just put a black um, background onto it because 
this makes it non-transparent so the transparency is staying the same but at the same moment it also kind of yeah works because black doesn't glow if you would make a white drop shadow it wouldn't work because white glows but black is black black doesn't emit any light and so now you can start painting your emissive over the whole material wherever you like to so you could go to skin let's I don't know create a boost I'm gonna add a, a I'm gonna click on paint duplicate it just so that I you know you can do this easily just duplicate it and then paint with the second one or let's call it uh, paint red paint blue it doesn't really matter it's just for you so you have the orientation what is what and don't just get confused later on and have to click on and off to see what is happening if I disable this layer Alright, let's paint on here for example okay I want this to be the blue one so let's paint on blue just like that if you want to get the, the color back super easy just go into the emissive view and then hey give me that red color thank you and, and then you can continue painting just like that so there is a way to use fill layers for emissive it is basically the same procedure but you have to be a little bit more careful with it and I have an example right here which is the emissive layer with a mask so I have this fill layer right here I'm gonna activate this just to show you so this layer right here has the color in it and the emissive transparency is at 100 so it's light on but you don't change the transparency on the emissive layer itself but you do on the folder so if you change the transparency on a folder you essentially change the transparency for all layers that are in that folder and so how do how did i do this we're gonna do it step by step again first off what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make a new folder i'm gonna call this fill layer emissive i'm gonna activate all these layers here again and uh, just for visuals you know I'm gonna let's make a fill layer okay we get the fill layer activate deactivate all that stuff just keep the emissive Whoop, gonna make it red oh the whole skin is lit up and I add the black mm -hmm. Saving. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna add a black mask. So, okay, I'm gonna add a fill to the black mask. Let's say I don't know a shape. Let's look into my database. What can we use? What can we use? Um, alphas. Go to alphas. Hmm. We're going to, need to use this one right here. So I'm just going to drag it in there. And I'm going to place it on the back side. Nope, don't want it to be repeating. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, mirror this so now comes in the, the important part so right now we have the wrong brush <laughs> let's uh, clear that 
basic stuff. There we go. Just like that. And I'm gonna save this skin file right here. So now we have this these emissive dots. If we check on the emissive channel, you can see, okay, it's all just red, but hey, on the edges, it is smooth again. You can't fix this with contrast, by the way. There will always be some kind of smoothing in there. Um, so what we're gonna do is, obviously, we want to add um, a drop shadow. How are we gonna do this? This is where the layer stack and a specific feature of it comes in very, very, very handy. So we're gonna go to our assets and then gonna go to effects. And here you see all the effects. We have this drop shadow right here. I'm just gonna drag and drop it actually into the layer. And so now I have created a pass through layer. I pass through layer. So this pass through layer is going to affect every layer below it that is in the same folder. And what I can do now is actually I'm gonna activate that this is supposed to, yep, this is already working for the emissive. Yep, yep, and I want to add a drop shadow. So let's make the opacity, let's make this red. Wait, no, I think I have a little mistake right here. Let me quickly look it up. That's why I included these, yeah, filter drop shadow. Exactly, yeah, just like I thought. So the distance and the size and the spread. There we go. Yeah. So just the opacity. We're gonna set the opacity to one, and then, um, distance actually to zero. I'm gonna set the the size to zero uh, point. I mean, you can set it to a pretty low value, just like this. And then you have the black outlines, which are going to prevent you from spilling <laughs> your emissive. <laughs> All right, what else is there? Uh, we could actually add a filter, which is the mirror filter, and then we're gonna have the whole thing mirrored. There we go. Now you have it on both sides. Let's switch back to the material view. And just like that. If you want it to be less emissive, you just have to make it darker and it won't glow that much. All right, so now you can move it around. It can even overlay now in the mirror. And if you check on the emissive, it will always stay good. So what you have to do now is you have to set the opacity on the folder. But for that, I'm actually going to create another folder that I put in the folder and I'm gonna drop the layers in there. So I'm gonna say all the way, I, no, this is uh, night on. And we have selected the emissive channel in the drop down menu. So I'm, yeah, it stay, can stay at 100. Otherwise, if I say it's a brake light, I'm going to set it to one. There you go. So this would be break light now. Always name your folders or channels uh, for the emissive so that you know how this works. All right. This is how you paint your illum by hand or using fill layers. Now, what about custom tires? Let's get onto this. So tires are a little bit easier to handle because tires are able to use normal maps. So I'm gonna show you how you can paint or make tires by hand and paint the patterns in them by hand as well. So let's go in here and 
we have the original textures activated. I'm going to deactivate them. I'm also going to remove those right here. <laughs> um, there we go. There is. There we go. Weird. All right. So let's make a new folder. And in this folder, I'm going to place a film layer. It's just the usual procedure, procedural uh, procedure. <laughs> Got a little brain lag as it seems to. All right, so base color. Let's see. Uh, we need a color of a tire. Um, now what you could do is you could activate the original tire here and then just take the color from that deactivate it from the layer uh, there we go so now you have this right here and I'm gonna as always deactivate the channels it is not metallic I'm gonna leave it to zero it is rough it shouldn't be reflecting that much it is somewhat let's say 0 0.4 and I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I'm gonna change the color a little bit to something darker just a little bit and so on this layer now I'm gonna activate the height channel and now we are working with normal maps and that stuff so this is the next big topic so I'm gonna activate it and you see the slider right here but it doesn't do anything yet first I'm going to make a change to the roughness I'm gonna add a black mask and we use one of the generators to bim, bim, bim. wait no we're not gonna use one of the generators we're actually gonna use a fill first before now let's see dum, dum. yeah we're gonna use this one okay let's rotate it so now we get those lines in here we're gonna add the contrast okay, no. balance we're gonna this one right here for example and noise parameters x amount y amount uh, dum dum dum. there we go so now i can change the slider for the height channel and you will see in the 3d view and in the 2d view how it's going to change the surface depth That's crazy, <laughs> right? And I'm gonna duplicate this layer and gonna deactivate all just the color and the roughness and all that stuff. I'm just gonna keep the, the height channel. And instead of the uh, fill right here, I'm gonna add the generator. Let's make it dirt. And now you got your dirty, uh, or your, your used tire pattern basically the scale a little bit and <laughs> like this you just made some kind of a tire <laughs> some kind <laughs> but hey we talked about um, creating the pattern by hand so let's do this first off I'm going to make a paint on the mask and so now we're just going to paint onto the 2D view. So don't forget, change your alignment and your size space. Always. I'm gonna deactivate the symmetry. There we go. Other side. So now we have these rails. And the rails. A rim. I don't know how to say how to to say that. And next, I want to 
add some lines in here and for that I have the radius symmetry which is already set up for you you just have to to use it <laughs> I'm gonna increase the count to 26 okay 16 is the highest so uh, let's change the alignment again and the size space and then Oh, we need a stable 25 degree uh, 45 degree angle right okay yeah this is this is a little bit harder to kind of keep the, the distance always the same. But you can see you can see the result. This is the result. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna undo this. And I'm just gonna uh, uh, let's go to the orthogonal view again. Let's focus it from top down. There we go. And then you paint your stuff inside of the tire. Gives us an interesting pattern, I have to admit. <laughs> of course it is easier to use a fill so I'm just gonna remove the paint right there gonna um, redo the main two lines the two main lines basically just like this and then I'm going to uh, oh yeah wait no I can instead of doing the lines like this uh, I'm gonna add a paint and then do the lines and now I'm going to add a fill below the paint which I'm gonna use some office for which uh, line lines let's see what we can find how about this line stripe so boop, there we go all right, and uh, we don't want him to bend. We want them right here. I'm going to say you are only allowed to horizontal. Mm -hmm -hmm. This is the result. Go with four, five, and then offset, offset, dum dum dum. Let's put him in here. Make it smaller. This is too small. Okay, thirty. There we go. So now you get a nice inner side do the same for the other side as well so you could just duplicate this effect and then move it to the other side this is how you build your tire basically or you use a complete material that's also possible there are so many possibilities in substance painter mm, that's the best part about it you always find a different way <laughs> All right, so we have this right here, and I'm gonna 
duplicate this layer because I want to add some dirt to it. I'm just gonna delete those and then add generator dirt and I'm gonna make this reference just a little bit look circles points to five just so that we get the effect and then have it like this really slicks is it slick i don't know if this is a slick <laughs> i'm no tire expert please forgive me <laughs> all right let's take a look at how you can bake normals because on skin on the skin texture set you can't use normals actually but if you want to have something uh, on there that looks like it has a height map or a normal map then you gotta bake it and that's a procedure using a filter as well but there are some other methods as well so Let's go back to the skin layer, the skin texture set list. Uh, the, the, the skin texture set, not, not the list. And then I'm gonna add a layer which I call, a folder which I call is the, the normal, normal skin, whatever. I'm gonna make a fill layer, just the usual thing. And then I'm gonna add a height is and uh, let's say I want something right here in the back side uh, which I'm gonna bake then later on what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna make a mask the usual thing gonna push this to one side already and uh, let's add a fill and add some kind of a alpha in there which we can use to then bake the height difference mm. I have so many alphas actually it's actually hard to decide on one <laughs> in this case uh, let's just use this one right here so let's map it to where it should be So in the 3D view, you can see the height effect, just like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add uh, a color to this layer so that it's already a little bit distinct from the rest. I'm gonna make it ro uh, less rough. It's supposed to be metal. Hmm, just like this. Let's make it a little bit brighter. All right, I like this. Okay, so now you can see we kind of have some normal map on there. But for now, it's just in Substance Painter. And how do we get this out of there? So you have multiple ways. And I'm gonna show you one way for now. All the other ways are experimental. This is basically the one that is easy and confirmed um, to be working on time. I'm just gonna make a new folder, put this in there. And just like before on the emissive with fill layer, we're gonna go to our assets, go to the, the effects, and then up here you have baked lighting environment. You have also baked lighting stylized, but we want to bake the environment in our case, and we're gonna drop this into the layer stack above the layer which we want to bake. So now dum -dum -dum, we are going to check on the base color so this is how the base color looks right now with this 
and we need to put in a environment map. So let's open our assets again. Go to environments. And then let's use the uh, Studio 3 Studio Automotive. Seems to be good. All right, so now you can see, oh, we get some shadowing on this part right here. Um, oh yeah, yeah, wait, it's baking everything that's below. So, oh, okay. So the way you have to do this is you just gonna put this on top like right there. And then you're gonna put it everything under it into a separate folder like this and now if you look onto the base color channel you have this height effect right here so this is how how it works with this height effect so everything has to be in like one folder on the top is the baked lighting environment and then below that are all different layers we go back to the material view you can see okay the metal part is missing don't worry what we can do about this is just basically just gonna duplicate this and put it above the baking layer and then just keep metal and rough just like this so this is the baking folder ba baking folder basically and then this is the skin folder just like that. And this way, if you export your base color, it's gonna end up looking with this height. And gonna end up looking like that with, with this height right here, basically. But you can already see <laughs> that we have some problem regarding the uh, coloring. So if I deactivate this, you can see, oh, this is way darker. Why? Why is it getting brighter? Because of the baking. That's how it works essentially. Um, so you kind of have to actually just change the lighting settings so that it doesn't do that in your baking. So let's go for a uh, hundred. You can, you know, activate, deactivate it so that you see what's going on. This is also going to back this one right here. It's actually interesting. It kind of flatten it all out, but in the end in the game, it will still look pretty good nonetheless. All right. So what about the dirt mask? Well, the dirt mask is a grayscale mask you can additionally add to your skin to give the game a knowledge about where it is allowed to put ice or dirt on the car when the player is driving over an ice surface or through the dirt surface and this is actually pretty straightforward and you can do this procedurally perfectly fine so right here we are have already an example for this here in textures um, example uh, dirt example so I'm gonna activate this so you can see how it looks um, dum, dum, dum. Let's, let's see okay so this is how the dirt mask looks basically um, not exactly because it is all the way the you don't have the base color activated so you would only see this you know but you just have to go to a dirt mask and then you can see it right here so how did i do this basically i have a dirt mask in this black and then you know i'm just putting on a mask with some generators onto it 
which then I can control in terms of the height. And you know, the position is basically a, a world space position, which has a fade in it. So that's how this works. And let's make it for ourselves. So if you want to work on a dude mask, Firstly, you're going not to look at material. You can look at material, but that's gonna be a little bit more complicated. If you, um, I mean, technically it still works, so we can do this. Um, we're gonna start by making a new layer, fill layer, and we're gonna set the dirt mask to zero. So black is zero, there won't be any dirt mask, and so next, we're gonna duplicate this layer and say, okay, on this, the dirt mask is gonna be one, 100%. Totally fine. You can't see any of this yet because there is no color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this white and I'm gonna make this black, basically. Technically, you can just keep this uh, out right here. You technically only need the white color, which you could also make some a brownish tone. I mean, it is dirt, so you kind of want to have rep representation. All right. So now I have this brown uh, color right here, and we're going to add a black mask to it, obviously. And I'm just going to add a generator. And you can do it, you can paint it by hand as well. That's totally up to you. Technically, I could use a fill and then use a let's see, gradient. Gradient, not dots, gradient linear, gradient transparent. Nope, nope. How about this one? This one seems good. Okay. So I can see, okay, there are some brown parts, but we're not gonna use the UV projection. We are going to use the planar projection in this case. So all you need to do right now is just turn this around. And then uh, just have to increase the contrast so that we know where it is up or down. So this goes up. So now here's the contrast. We can increase the balance, decrease the contrast. Uh, gonna increase it a little bit. And then just like this. And next I'm gonna add a generator, which is gonna be the dirt generator. And so now you can see how the dirt would look on the car. I'm gonna uh, boop, 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 boop. decrease the level. Wait, I'm gonna make the gradient on top of it. Nope, uh, not like this, but dirt is going to be changed to linear dodge. Here we go. So now I can change the balance in general or the contrast. So this is, this is how it would look then in the game with dirt mask when the car gets dirt on it and obviously you can increase this uh, by any way you would like so change it to this full dirty completely over the top obviously um, but gives you nice results uh, in general 
Uh, let's see, subtract. You can play around with the, uh, the settings. And that. And get the. Well, yeah, that's the best for you in general. This one, for example, right here, overlay. It's working really good. And yeah, that's how it looks then in the game. Let's make it a little bit brighter so you see the dirt. So that would be the dirt then on the car, literally. And in the end, you just disable the color and voila, you have your dirt mask. And now after exporting, you can take a look at it. So yeah, let's export the textures. And you just, here you select the folder where you want it to be exported. Next, you're gonna select the output template. So in this case, it's gonna be Trackmania 2020. You can find the export template in the archive below as well. And next we have the file type. So I'm selecting Targa for this. And I'm gonna select a 4K resolution. And dilation transparent. You can also use uh, pass through or dilation and diffusion. This works as well. And I don't want to export the backplate. You don't need a backplate. And then you can look through here and then just export it. Just like that. So here we have the output folder and I'm gonna assign paint.net to these files so that we can see what they look like. This is the backplate and you gotta delete this, there we go. And so now all these textures, you can delete those which you haven't touched, which you haven't used. For example, the glass. We can just delete the glass, for example. Delete delete so we have the normal for skin we can delete this as well because we're not gonna use this skin normal baking that's just a test uh, I did uh, wheels I mean occlusion Hello, this is Shadow while editing a little addition on the wheels ambient occlusion you gotta keep it I did a little mistake here in the tutorial by deleting it but there is actually a default ambient occlusion on the wheels. So if you have made custom wheels, keep your ambient occlusion, if even if it's just white or black. Just keep it and put it into the archive at the end. Wheels don't have a dirt mask. Delete code R, we can delete this as well. The normal stay, B, skin normal baking. Okay, this is going out as well. And so, we have the skin eye, which is the alum or emission. Uh, you can see if I duplicate this and put them together, you can see, okay, there's our light. Uh, so I'm gonna close this again. The dirt mask on our details, we haven't touched the details in general. Okay, we touched the details a little bit, but only on the emissive, so we can delete those as well. And the normals we haven't touched as well. Roughness, nope, nope. So skin, ambient occlusion, I'm gonna take the one from the game. Skin B, skin code R, dirt mask, skin R. So those textures are the ones that left, and those we need to convert. And then we can put them into the zip file for our skin. And it's gonna, and we can import them then into the game. So by doing this, we're just gonna open them all up in paint.net, for example. So I'm gonna sort them based on what they are and what they need in terms of 
texture format. So here is the texture format txt. Let's see, uh, we got bc1, ao is bc1 as well. So then we have bc5. Dum, 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 bc5 this is bc3 uh, this is the code code r bc4 dirt mask as well and the occlusion right and then normal is bc5 and this is bc1 as well so now we're just going to save them as dds files And so now you can pack all the DDS files into a zip archive and then this is going to be your car. So let's say 7-zip, gonna put it in the archive and then tutorial skin. And we want this to be a zip. Right. There we go. Thirty four megabytes, so this is bigger than you can upload to Trackmania. But still we are going to check out how it looks in game. Hello, this is Shadow again while editing. So if you want to upload your skin to a club, you have to lower the resolution of your skin to fit a maximum of 24, 24 megabyte is like the perfect size of your skin or the maximum size. There is a limit you can upload and all you have to do is just scale down some of the textures from 4K to 2K. 4K is a little bit overtuned for the game. You can keep it for example for the skin B texture. All right, so now we are in the game. Um, to check out our skin, we're just going to the replay editor and I'm just gonna, I don't know, use one of these replays. I'm gonna edit this. You could also just go into the single player uh, works uh, if you have uploaded a skin but just to check how it looks uh, the replay editor is the better choice because you don't have to upload it that way all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete the skins right here I'm gonna change the to daylight and let's place a skin somewhere, for example, right here, a ghost. All right. I'm gonna use this ghost, yep. And now we are going to fly to it. And we are going to select the skin we've just created and imported. So let's see. Add the letter T, tutorial skin, and there it is. There is our skin. If you want to test the um, 
the lighting and all that stuff you obviously you have to play with it to test it but just from the looks of it there is the skin and this is how you import it that's how you get your skin into the game all right i hope you like this tutorial it has been a long record and probably in the future there may be another one otherwise thank you for watching give it a thumbs up whatever if you liked it and i will see you guys the next time bye bye